Aloha and mahalo for joining us today. Hey, I'm George Ledoux and this is the Identity Project. We're so glad you're here. The reason that we're, it looks like we're shooting in Hawaii, which I wish we really were, is to give us an idea, a background that perhaps God has more for us than what we've been living. You know, Jesus said in John 10:10 10, 10, that, that he has come that we might have the abundant life more abundantly he desires for us to live and really it's an issue of us ruling and reigning with him you know when you go to um, uh, a resort like Hawaii don't you feel at ease and peaceful and everything's okay you got enough money to, to get through the vacation and and you're in paradise you're kind of in the Garden of Eden, and you're, you're just able to relax and enjoy yourself. Well, how about if we were to take that back home with us? And where we live, in our homes, in our daily lives, in our workplace, in our churches, that we would still have that kind of life. Well, as we understand who God made you to be, and as we understand that he's invited us to rule and reign with him, and we begin to do that, we're going to experience the abundant life more and more. That's where we're going with the Identity Project. What we're doing is helping you understand how uniquely made you are, how precious you are to God, how the master engineer of all the universe designed you so that you could do his business on earth. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you have ever gone in for a job interview? You wanted to apply for a job, you wanted to get a job. And uh, much of the employment scene has to do with where you were trained, what you were trained in, what your strengths are, your weaknesses, and, and find something that, that would fit you in particular. I've got good news for you. Your Father in Heaven has a business and it's perfectly designed for you, for your strengths, for your aptitude, your likes and your dislikes. You're going to do it just great. You're already designed to do it. That's why He made you the way He made you. It's so that you could get involved in Dad's business here on earth. Amen. And so we're going to talk about that today. Chapter 1 is my father's business. And in that we're going to look at three key areas. We're going to look at the difference between children and sons. Then we're going to take a look at the issue of what really is my father's business. How can I put words to it? How would I define it? If you could define your heavenly father's business for me, what would you say? And then thirdly, how do we grow up into my father's business? All right. Well, let's start with taking a look at sons of God in Galatians 4, 1 through 7. Let's take a listen. And now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, does not differ it at all from a slave, though he is a master of all but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God, through Christ. Did you hear that? See, as long as we remain a child, that we can't grow up into taking over our office. In other words, we can't run Dad's business. I say this. I say that the children of God 
go into dad's office and play on his Xerox machine. Where the sons of God go in and say, hey dad, would you teach me your business? Why did you do what you did there? How does this work? How does that work? I want to one day take over the business so you can go retire. Where one day the buck stops with me. In other words, that I really know how to rule and reign in this life. And as we begin to take a look at what my father's business is, you're going to see how important the power and authority is in the structure of dad's business. Now, let me just say this up front. Men are part of the bride of Christ, right? And women, in the real sense, are sons of God too. So let's not get hung up on gender nouns here as we're talking. When I say sons of God, I'm meaning the women too. I'm, I'm talking about those believers who love, love the Lord, whether you're male or female, okay? So, as we heard in Galatians there, that the children need a steward or a master over them until they reach the age where they bear their own responsibility. And it's great, whatever age we are, that we really live that and aren't trying to be something else. Now, let's take a look at Romans 8. 14 through 19. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Amen. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So, are you being led by the Spirit of God today? If you are, you fit the definition of being the Son of God. And it's critical that we grow up into that sonship. You see, Jesus was 33 at the fullness of his ministry, right? And he was doing signs and wonders. Matter of fact, he said, greater things will you do because I go to the Father. Are you ready for that? How many do you see in your life doing greater things? Well, I believe that those that are listening here today are desirous to fulfill God's heartbeat and to bring heaven down on earth and to do those greater things, to walk in them, not talk about them, but to actually live them and be activated in them, to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. To be able to bind up the broken hearted. Uh oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Because the next part here that we want to take a look at is what is my father's business? Okay? But before we do that, I want us to understand how important it is for you to grow up into a mature son of God where you are exercising the power and the authority that comes in being part of the family business. You, you saw there in Romans 8 19, it said that all creation is yearning, it's groaning for the revealing of the sons of God. The mountains and the trees are saying, when will the sons of God be revealed, manifested in the earth? When will we see the love and the power of God through the sons of men, the way God designed it to be, co-laboring with him, in the earth. Why? To establish justice. You see, I don't know if you've noticed, but this world is kind of crazy. Right? There's stuff happening every day that is not according to the will of God. 
who is going to be the intercessor, who is going to be the one that stands in the gap and says, no more. Devil, here's the line. You're not crossing it. Now, you can try, devil, and perpetrate something, but as a son of God, I'm exercising the power and authority that my Father has given me and said, no more, no way. Justice is going to be seen in the earth. And I'm convinced of this, that Jesus is coming back to the church in the power of His Spirit in you and me before He comes back for the church. You see, one day there's going to be the trumpet sounding. And the Bible says that the dead in Christ will rise and those of us who are alive will be caught up with Him in the air and forevermore we will be. Well, you see, saints, when that happens, the work will be done. I don't need to do the Father's business anymore because the trumpet is sounded and then we'll be caught up in the air. But the Scriptures admonishes us to occupy, Jesus said. That means, if you translate it, to do business, to do the Father's business while it's yet day, while we still have it, time to do his business. Amen? Jesus said in John 4.34, let's take a look at that. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. My meat is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. In other words, Jesus was saying, that which gives me life and sustenance is to do the Father's will, is to do the Father's business. You see, over heaven, I think there's a big sign that says, Father and Sons. And we are invited into doing the business of the Father. We get to be His voice, His hands, His feet in the earth today to execute the written judgments of God. Hallelujah. This is our privilege as sons of God. Now, let's take a look at what the Father's business is. As we see in Matthew 4.23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Amen. Now let's take a look at 1 John 3 8. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Isn't that beautiful? Because the anointing of the Lord God is upon me. We can say it of ourselves, the same scripture that Jesus quoted in his own hometown. Because Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I get to stand in power and authority because Christ in me, the hope of glory, is here to be manifested in the earth. But, you know, it's kind of like we've had amnesia and we haven't known this is part of our identity. This is part of who God has made us to be. I say this, that we will only ascend or we will only work out and become to the level of the identity that we hold. We can't go past it. So, as we learn our identity, then we begin to operate in it. We begin to do it. So, what is the Father's business? Just, just to, to sum it up real quick, right? Well, Jesus went about teaching in the city of God, preaching the kingdom of God, healing the sick, and casting out demons. Amen? Teaching, preaching, healing, and casting out demons. 1 John 3 eight, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest to destroy the works of the enemy. You see, it says the Son of God there. It doesn't say Jesus. Now, certainly Jesus is the Son of God. But let me ask you, are you a son of God? And I, I really mean that question. Are you a son of God? 
Because I see many people today, many so-called Christians are, are children of God, and they're sitting at the Jesus bus stop waiting for Jesus to come and take them home. They're not doing anything for the Lord. See, I differentiate a son as one who says, yes, I want to grow up in the things of God. I want to go through my growing pains so I can do my father's business. I can run and execute it. And as we just found out, my father's business is what? Destroying the works of the evil one. This is what you get to do. This is my privilege. Amen? Don't you want to do it? And do it well. That's where we're going with this identity project. So you can grow up into it and grow up quickly. And of course, my favorite is Isaiah 61, 1, 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who were bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. How many of you know that the Father's work isn't completed yet? There is still more of his work to do. Like what? Like preaching. Let's take out the verbs in Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. So there's the preaching. There's binding up. There's healing. Take a look at the list of them there in your book. Every time we do one of those verbs, verbs are action words, every time we take an action, we're destroying the works of the enemy. We are doing our Father's business. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Does that help bring into clarity what my father's business is and that he's invited me to be a co-laborer with him in the business? And saints, I want to make this clear. To the degree you understand your unique makeup, so will you be able to exercise that makeup in the father's business. Your makeup, the grace in your life, is perfectly designed to do the Father's business in the way that He's ordained you to do it. Isn't that good news? Hallelujah, Ephesians 2.10. That you are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, that He has prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. And the third area that we want to talk about is growing up. How do we grow up into... A more mature level. Let's take a look at the chart here and on the left hand side it gives us the example when we were born again and then we see the curve line of age 33 where Jesus was in the fullness of his ministry. So I ask you the question how old are you spiritually? Where would you put yourself on the spiritual life curve there? Are you two? Are you three? Are you ten? Are you twenty? How old are you? The good news is this. It doesn't really matter how old you are as long as you have a purpose in your heart to grow up. Because we can grow up spiritually in a short period of time. It doesn't have to be chronological. I know many Christians that have been Christians 40 years and they're still like a five-year-old. See, I just... I describe spiritual maturity as those who are serving others. You see, children are focused on themselves. Now, the more mature you get, the more you are focused on helping others. And if you understand that you have a power and authority, you understand that you have faith and everything that you need to be able to do the Father's business, to bring heaven down on earth, it, life gets pretty exciting. Life becomes an adventure now. Every morning we get to wake up and say, Father, what's on your heartbeat today? What do you have me to walk into that you prepared for me before the foundation of the world? Now it's no longer me having the pressure of trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. Now all I need to do is learn how to hear him better, walk with him, 
get his heartbeat and see the fulfillment of his purposes and destiny here in the earth. Aren't you excited about that? And so how am I going to grow up spiritually? Number one, you can't grow up apart from the Word. How much in the Word are you? Okay, we're going to talk about something called the Promise Book in the chapters to come to help you grow up in the Word of God. Worship, obedience, intimacy with God, knowledge, understanding, wisdom, love. All these are integrated to help us grow up. The more passionate I am to see my relationship with my Heavenly Father become intimate and alive, so will I grow in maturity. This is where we're going, saints, is that one day you can say what Jesus said when he said, the Father and I are one. The Father and I. Won't that be great? Amen. When you can walk in that in confidence and faith and peace. See you next time on the Identity Project.